let us discuss about mesh analysis in mesh analysis we are supposed to use kirchhoff's voltage law it states that the total voltage in any closed loop is equal to zero or it states that summation of v is equal to summation ir this is what we are supposed to do in the case of mesh analysis step number 1 in the case of mesh analysis is assume current in all the loops right now the example which i have taken we have three loops so let us consider first of all the current in all the three loops i1 i2 and i3 so now these are the three currents that we have taken make sure to take the same direction for all the currents clockwise anti clockwise up to you but it must be same this is as a rule in mesh analysis so we have taken i1 i2 i3 in these three loops let us start writing the equations let us consider loop number 1 first of all so in loop number 1 we have two resistances r1 r2 whereas we have one voltage source v1 so now here comes a point how to take the polarity of voltage source positive negative so now let us discuss about this point please have a look over here as per the direction of current if the current is going from negative to positive it is increasing this is how you can memorize or the symbol which is the last one positive that will be taken increasing positive also the last symbol positive so the voltage source will be taken as positive on the other hand if it is going from positive to negative it is reducing also you can have a look the last symbol is negative so it will be taken as negative coming back to our loop number 1 summation of v is equal to summation of ir first of all we are going to consider the voltage source one voltage source is there in our loop number 1 as per the direction that we have considered it is going from negative to positive so it is increasing so let us write down plus v1 is equal to i into r first of all let us take r1 so only i1 current is flowing through this r1 resistance it comes out to be i1 r1 plus r2 now r2 resistance is shared in between loop number 1 and loop number 2 that means current i1 as well as current i2 both currents are flowing through this r2 by writing down the equation of any particular loop we always consider the current for the same loop to be maximum so that means right now i am writing down equation for loop number 1 so let me assume i1 is maximum so if i1 is maximum the current flowing through r2 will be i1 minus i2 equation number 1 that is equation of loop number 1 now let us write down the equation for loop number 2 so this is our loop number 2 again summation of v is equal to summation of ir in loop number 2 we do not have any voltage source please have a look so that means summation of v will be equal to zero is equal to r3 r3 is the resistance in which only current i2 is flowing so in the same manner i am going to write down i2 r3 plus r2 again it is shared in between loop number 1 and loop number 2 but now as i am writing down the equation for loop number 2 i will consider i2 to be maximum so how to write down the total current flowing through r2 that is i2 because now i2 is maximum minus i1 similarly the current flowing through r4 i2 minus i3 because it is being shared between loop number 2 and loop number 3 so that is r4 i2 minus i3 so this is our equation number 2 equation number 3 that is 
loop 3. So now in loop 3, again, summation V is equal to summation IR. We have one voltage source over here. Please have a look the direction. As per the direction of the current that we have considered, it is going from positive to negative. So positive to negative means decreasing negative symbol. So that is minus V2 is equal to R5. Only current I3 is flowing. So that is I3 into R5 plus second resistance R4 being shared between loop 3 and loop 2. But now as I am writing down the equation of loop number 3, I3 is maximum. So if I3 is maximum, the current flowing through R4 will be I3 minus I2. So now we have three equations, three unknown variables, I1, I2, I3. You can simplify by using substitution method, elimination method or Cramer's rule. When R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 as well as V1 and V2 are given. This is how the mesh analysis can be applied on any random given problem.